Time for the next update on the motor upgrade for the 300. In the last video in this little mini series, you saw me making up the coupler, or at least making up part of the coupler um, that will connect my new larger motor, the motor from a Mitsubishi Outlander rear diff, rear axle, uh, to the BMW gearbox. In this episode, I'm going to try and finish that, but more importantly, make up the other parts of the adapter plate um, because we need the adapter plate parts ready to go in order to be able to make sure that the coupler is uh, the right length. Um, so before the coupler can be finished, we've got to make up the adapter plate, and then we've got to finish the uh, finish the coupler, get it all welded up and straight before we can then finalise the exact. Uh, alignment of the two what the really six parts of the adapter plate all will make sense as I go through this video I hope slight change of plan from the last video um, I didn't actually cut down this plate to 40 by 40 there's just no point um, what I'll do actually is drill out the holes for the stud and the mounting bolts for the gearbox um, drill a hole through the middle for the um, shaft to go through um, and then just cut out the outside that will minimise the amount of waste and give you the most useful pieces uh, rather than making extra cuts. So first job to do, if you can see down here, is to drill a hole for that stud. So you just need to mark that out, drill a hole and we can get that located and then all of the other studs will follow against that. Or rather, all the other holes will follow against that. snug fit. Transfer punches. Find one that's a snug fit for the hole, drop it in, smack it with a hammer. There's still some play in them because of the nature of these holes. So it's about getting it as straight as you can. I think that's all of them.
So I've stuck some hardware in and flipped up and as you can see something's gone horribly wrong with my measuring. I'm honestly baffled. But the shaft, which you can't really see, should be in the middle of that hole and it's there. I've just drilled a new hole at its centre. So I'm going to have to drill a new cutout, much to the dismay of my neighbours I suspect because it's flipping noisy. Probably weld that one back in. I'm gonna have to weld bar over it. Absolutely no idea how that happened. Baffled. There we go. Second time's a charm. Still utterly bemused as to how that went wrong after I measured it three times. But anyway, nothing that can't be fixed with a welder. So last thing for today, I want to cut, actually not today, <laughs> if you can see that, it's about quarter to five and I've got kids to feed and wine to drink. So tomorrow I'll cut the box section that will go around here and join the two plates together. There we go. Um, again, forgive noise in the background, since we have theme of videos this week. That's next door. Um, four nicely even pieces cut, a little bit of tidy up needed. But then those can make my right, box around this hole. And then the other piece, this piece, sits on the top. So all together we have 40 mil, two six mil plates, 52 mil separation, which is what gives us calculation for how long this needs to be but yeah I'm not 100% confident in that so it'd be good to get it all together test it out so I'm going to clean these bits up <coughs> and um, maybe while well, I've got the big saw out actually trim that plate down a little bit and then get it all cleaned up and I can weld two out of three bits together I can weld the box in the middle together I can weld it down to one plate but I need to make sure that the other plate isn't welded together until I've tested it with the coupler in and spun the motor or rather probably spun the gearbox and check that the plates don't move relative to each other so check that they're, that they're perfectly centered and that the coupler is straight and only once I've tested all that can I pull it all apart and do the final weld together also of course need to weld some captive nuts on here this was thick enough to thread probably um, but just easier to, to weld some captive nuts on uh, once it's all uh, tested. Actually, not captive nuts on this side, captive nuts on that side uh, for the gearbox. A little bit of welding. Uh, I've been teaching the youngest to weld. I think nine's an appropriate age. Uh, and I've been fixing mistakes. Um, just welded a cutout back in there um, so that there is only one circle again. Um, I might go back and tidy it up a little bit, but it's very solid. It doesn't need to be there, it's purely cosmetic uh, and you'll never see it once the uh, surround's on. But I figured I'd give myself something extra to weld to. So that's all nice and flat now ready for my uh, fully cut and cleaned up um, box section to go on. So one, two, three, four. All nice and clean. Need to make sure I know which side these go on. 
uh, but then they can be welded on. A little bit more welding. Uh, I forgot to stick the camera on for this. But I've just tacked those four pieces down. Bit, bit too much of a gap here, nothing I can't fill, but um, it's kind of what it took to get it nice and square in the end. I'll put them on the diagonal so that if rain does get in above between the two plates, it will just run off rather than pooling on the top. Doesn't make any difference to strength really. That's, that should be straight up between those two bolts there. And then our other plate will fit across like that. So it might not get them all stacked up today, um, apart from anything else, from all that grinding, so to speak. Uh, my back's a bit sore, and I don't really fancy lifting that very heavy motor up and piling a uh, gearbox on top of it tonight. But good progress. Uh, it's all ready to go together uh, and getting close to finishing things up. So there we have it, first test fit of the full stack. Bit of an oil leak going on there, not surprisingly. I thought I'd emptied most of the oil out of there, but still clearly a bit left in the gearbox after all that shaking around. Uh, so our Outlander rear motor, mounting plate of which our connections to engine mounts will come down here. Our gearbox plate, these two are not attached yet, so this and this are not welded together obvious reasons. Inside there is our coupler and our BMW gearbox on the top and I can rotate that quite happily and obviously because the coupler is not fully welded up yet don't get any movement in the uh, in the two plates. So now I need to get that coupler, now that's the right length, I need to get that coupler nice and straight and weld it up. Little bit of off camera work. We've had the uh, coupler in here, been spinning it around with the dial gauge. With this setup, about a tenth of a millimeter is probably as good as I'm going to get. Um, it's just slightly less than that now, um, which is probably about where my um, existing coupler is, and that's fine. Um, so reasonable objective and um, I've stuck some tack welds on now that the splined end, splined end is uh, there they're not particularly even I'll go around and put some more on uh, and then stick it back in the uh, in the lathe and just tidy them all up so it's not unbalanced it's nice and round uh, next step is to get the other end straight so I can take a bit more off this in the lathe first uh, and then get it in here Make sure that's straight and get that welded up. This thing is so hard, it's killing tools. So in order to trim it down, I've resorted to this. And that'll do. Nice thing about cutting this down is that the alignment tool I made for my old coupler now fits. Must be a slightly loose fit, but not a lot of wiggle in it. Should help me to get it nice and straight.
bit more tidying to do, but getting there. Not quite a perfect seam all the way around, but let's be honest, perfectly strong enough. A little bit more cleaning up, particularly at the bottom, and that'll be good to go. And then it's just a question of um, captive nuts to be welded onto here. Um, gonna have to drill the hole, drill some holes in here so that you can get to the bolts that go through this plate um, and into the into the motor. Um, so I'm gonna have to drill some access, access bolts or access holes through here as well. So I'm probably um, get these two welded together and then drill through from this side. I might tidy up these corners a bit as well, all a bit sharp. This whole plate needs a bit of tidying up as well, um, but it'll need that before it's welded anyway. Needs all the mill scale taking off, sorry, biting out metal splinters. Um, so nearly there, um, I might hold off, well, I might put this video out. I might hold off until it's all done. So that's it for one more backyard video, I think. Um, I'm gonna be away for a few days now, so I can uh, edit this while I'm on the move uh, and get this video out. Uh, and then when I get back, finally stick all this together and we'll have our new drivetrain ready to go back in the 300 or go in the 300 uh, and see what sort of performance we get. Still got some wiring to do. Um, big thanks to uh, Tom, the creator of Simp BMS, who's um, created some 3D printed plugs for this motor, um, which saves me a load of pain um, because the ones that go with it are kind of hard to get hold of unless you buy a whole loom. So I'll have to do that. Then obviously use cooling to work out. Uh, mounts but once this bit's done we can take all this up to the workshop and um, get it test fitted into the um, into the GT car um, and start to work out mounts and everything else um, brackets for um, power steering pump and everything else which are going to hang off that uh, and get it all ready to go for a complete swap so probably one more video in the backyard working on this uh, and then all back to the workshop thanks for watching uh, if you do like this please do like and subscribe it all helps Thanks very much. Bye-bye.